Hey everybody, I hope you are excited for today because I certainly am. Notice I haven't done a metadata challenge in quite some time. So today I am going to be digging into the very strange world of consignment online. I have never done this before, although I know a lot of people that have. So we are going to be looking at Poshmark versus ThreadUp. Apparently these are the two top contenders in this space. Who's going to win in this metadata challenge? Well, we will certainly find out. So let's go get started. All right, so we are starting with thread up. I also noticed that when you're looking at these individual taxonomies, it has subcategories that are also um, kind of uniform across. So you can see here in premium, there's new arrivals, new with tags, designer, new arrival, new with tags, so on and so forth. The other thing I see is this revive thing um, by Rent the Runway. I don't really know what that means, but it does show up in um, a few of these. So that tells me that that might be a preferred brand. I'm going to start with the search bar. So I'm looking for a white dress. See what happens. Now, first of all, let's go back to that. It had some auto suggestions, which is nice. And then it also has some top picks. This one kind of looks like Beetlejuice. Uh, and I can sort of get an idea of the price range. And I can see that there are almost 5,000 results. I actually kind of like that they have the results in the auto suggest. That kind of gives me an idea as a consumer, especially since this is consignment. So I have no idea how much stock they have for any of these topics that this might be a good thing for me to start with because there's obviously some good results. Okay, so the first thing I see here is there is a tag, white dresses, um, if it's in someone's cart. That's interesting. So I do shop quite a bit in the um, used and gently used kinds of shops um, when we could actually go to shops still. Uh, and when you saw something in someone else's cart, you almost like, what did they what did they get what did they get because oftentimes with consignment there's only one and you don't know if it's your size or if it's damaged so it's almost like you're always looking out for what everyone else is getting so that's kind of interesting that they're tr maybe trying to replicate that that behavior in um physical consignment stores online then apparently old navy maybe this is telling me that a lot of white dresses show up in old navy it looks like when you're on the regular results page, there's these little icons in the top corner. I don't know what that means. Uh, so let's click on this to find out what that means. Uh, RTR. So this is Slate and Willow. I'm assuming that's a brand name and it's just saying that it's a white tailored dress. That's probably just the product name. It does give you a size zero. Oh boy, not my size. Okay, so it's it's it, it, this must be the original price down here, 178, and they must have a sale. This um, particular person or company that's selling on the consignment here that they had it for 52 and they've dropped it to 42. Okay, that makes more sense. Let's look at description because we're all about the metadata here on this channel. So black and white blocking. Uh, enhances the chic mood style of this ladylike dress. So it's a shirt dress, work, collared. So again, none of these uh, look to be fields. So controlled fields are our friend when we are trying to find things in an efficient manner using online applications because otherwise it, the search engine is just looking at this as a big block of text. So it might see shirt dress and work and not really understand how those things are related to one another because there's no value added. So this is really an uncontrolled field. It's a description. Um, there are materials, so um, no fabric content. What does that mean? Does that mean it's made of plastic like polyester? It would be good for me to know that. Oh, okay, so wait, Rent the Runway seems to be this little icon. Okay, so anything with this little, <laughs> I rolled over and then it told me. That's helpful. That's a little tool tip, right? Okay, so this is like specific designer stuff. Okay, um, we do have a few different pictures, which is nice, especially when it's consignment. Um, but this looks like a stock photo. Again, maybe uh, Rent the Runway uh, has models that actually models the clothing for, for you to see how it looks. But um, because these look like stock photos, it kind of makes me wonder, is, is this the item I would actually be getting 
or is this the item when it was brand new on a different site? See, when it's consignment, it would be really, really helpful to understand that from, from the visual. Okay, so measurements, there are measurements that looks like somewhat of a controlled field, um, although these do not seem like they are controlled. Uh, condition, that would be good. Uh, signs of wear include, okay, so this is just telling you essentially what Revive tells you. It's not telling you for this individual item what the wear for this item is, which I'm a little disappointed about. If I'm buying something for con for consignment, uh, if something has a giant rip in it or something has a stain on it, those are very different problems. <laughs> and I can probably fix a stain, I can't fix a rip. So that's really important for me to know. Gives you an item number, yay, unique IDs, those are our friends. Also does a very similar, hey, here's some suggested things based on your behavior. And then people who shop by. So, okay, these are Slate and Willow uh, types of, of things. So maybe behind the scenes, uh, ThreadUp has something like a knowledge graph, not saying it's a knowledge graph, but something like a knowledge graph that says, People that tend to like Slate and Willow, which is maybe something that's flowy, kind of low, uh, you know, casual kind of vibes to it, that seems to be what some of these other ones are. So maybe uh, ThreadUp has something for that suggestion matrix behind the scenes, which is really nice because for someone like me, I might find clothing on here that I'm really into, but I don't know much about brand names. So this helps me understand that a little bit better. So let's go back to the search results. These all seem to be from Rent the Runway, which is interesting. Why is Rent the Runway showing up at the very top? Maybe they are just really well known for white dresses and these all seem to fit my perspective. I'm looking for white dresses and I'm seeing a whole lot of white dresses. So that's really good. I also like that you can see how many people just like these articles of clothing. This is very different than a review, right? Because again, most of these things are consignment. There's only gonna maybe be one of them. So for people to say that they like it, that could mean that, you know, it's just a style or a brand or maybe um, the person selling it, they really like what they do. And that gives me an indication. I actually find that more valuable. This kind of heart system makes a lot of sense with consignment. All right, so we can also see on the side here that we've got the categories that are very traditional to clothing. They're very generic here though. So coats and jackets, well, there's spring coats, there's winter coats, what kind of coats are they talking about? Skirts, there's long skirts, short skirts, you know, high, low hem. What What is the kind of skirt that you're looking for? Those kinds of things are really, really helpful to have in your filters. They don't seem to have it though. Those are probably things that are in an uncontrolled field. So thread up, if you are listening, you might wanna make that a controlled field for the people that are using your site to sell because it really drives people to the thing that they're really looking for. Uh, discount, that's nice that there is a discount. I think that means from the original price. So that's good for you to know. Uh, ways to shop. Okay, so that's things on sale. That's that's pretty typical. There is the sizes, so that's good. And it also looks like they have the more um, generic sizing, like small, medium, large, as well as the numbered. And then you can also get into you know waist size and that sort of thing. That is nice to have that flexibility. Uh, let's see. You can also search brand, and they must have a lot because there is a search bar. So this is really helpful when you are making um, a taxonomy, and there's so many brands. Having that huge list is really, really hard on your user. The other thing is, I've seen a lot of people say, "Okay, well, I'll put the most prevalent brand." So they'll have like a counter next to each. Like, so Ann Taylor would have you know, like a 300 next to it, if there's 300 items in this particular search that are for Ann Taylor. That also does not help your user very much. That one is actually very common and it's a big pet peeve of mine. If that brand or that subject is so prevalent in my search, why would you give me a filter if that's what I'm seeing the most of, right? 
the filter should help me drill down to the more specific things that I'm looking for. Okay, then we have color. Um, the, the one thing I don't see here that I've seen on other shopping um, kind of sites is one that just says uh, multicolor. Awesome. Even if they are using just the item description to um, show the results instead of looking at a more specific uh, field within the metadata, it's still did a pretty good job. I mean, what I'm looking at right now, these are all white or cream or ivory, right? They're not all white. Um, things here that I would be expecting. Oh, and then here is material. Okay, so remember that dress we just looked at? It did say that it was not plant material, I believe. I mean, what does polyester fall into? Is polyester on here? Oh yeah, polyester, did it show up? Oh, okay, cool, okay. Oh, great, okay, so this is something that you would wanna actually have in the metadata for this item. Remember when we were in here, it says, wait a minute. Did it not? It did not say this before. I'm gonna review the tape. No, did not say this before. But now we know it's 100% polyester. Let's go back to women because I'm still curious, like why is this one brand showing up the most? Is it always gonna show up first? Let's try a red dress. Yeah, it seems like every time you do a search, they are highly promoting this, uh, this specific vendor of, of dresses. And it does seem like they might have like a specific deal with them since this revive thing for Rent the Runway is is even prevalent in their um, different browse functions. So I'm not a fan. And the reason that I'm not a fan is because it seems like you're biased. And if I'm somebody that's looking for red dresses and I really wanna find just red dresses and all you do is show me across the board this Rent the Runway, I might suspect that you get a little bit of a kickback or you get something for showing these to me first. Now, on the other side of the coin, maybe this Rent the Runway is a trusted partner and they know that people that get things from Rent the Runway are much more satisfied and happier with what they are getting. So if that's the rationale, I would just rather them put that somewhere on the site so I know that, because otherwise I just think they're biased. So let's keep going down before, until we find something not from them. Again, now I gotta go to the second page, not happy because it's all from Rent the Runway. Oh my goodness. <sighs> I'm still searching, searching. Let's go to page 996. Well, these don't, <laughs> these don't look like correct uh, <laughs> results. So that tells me that um, they're preferring quantity over quality in their search results. They're adding a lot of noise. That it, it, it a lot of people feel like padding the numbers of your search results makes people feel like they've got a whole world to look at. They've got everything. Go find what you want. But really, I mean, it makes the user overwhelmed. If you give me the top, you know, five pages, I, most people don't go past page three anyways. Consignment might be different because it's the thrill of the hunt, right? So that might be a little different, but even the most thrifty consignment person is probably not gonna go to page 1000 for finding something because look at these results. These are not, not what I was looking for. Um, how do you know who's selling it? That's the other thing. Okay, more from the seller, cool. But who is it? My expectation is if you have like these little boutiques uh, people that are selling a lot of their uh, thrift finds on ThreadUp or something else. Um, maybe I wanna follow them. Maybe I wanna be able to just look for only their stuff. And right now I don't see any metadata to help me with that. Obviously ThreadUp has that information because it just told me more from the seller. So it knows who the seller is, um, but it doesn't tell me who that seller is. So me as a consumer can't continue to follow them and know when I find something, if it's from them, I immediately get that trust factor. Right now I don't have that, that's a bummer. Okay, let's go look at Poshmark. Okay, so um, it looks like this is a brand, so you can follow a brand, it gives you, oh, this is nice. So it kind of tells you a little bit about the brand. It seems like this is like a landing page for a brand. So that tells me that Poshmark is very brand centric. 
Uh, we did see a lot of that over in ThreadUp as well. This is, but these are very detailed. So I would say that their taxonomy is much more thorough than thread up listings no i don't want to search oh oh you can search for people i wonder if that means that i can find um the consignment provider uh that i trust that would be really helpful especially with consignment like we even see this on amazon and other places where you can find specific vendors that are selling through those applications and you know that you have a good rapport with them you know that they're reliable they're good stuff so you can get that trust factor when you look at them seem to be missing in thread up but it is in poshmark so there you go poshmark there's a good one for you this i really did prefer the auto suggest over in thread up better uh, because it it first gave me in each of these categories how many search results um, that I was going to expect and also gave me a little sampling, which I thought was really nice. Okay, so we searched for white dresses. That's a big red flag for me already because I'm looking at this and I don't feel like it's giving me what I was really looking for. First paint, which is all I see before moving around on the screen, I see no white dresses, which tells me that their search might not be very good. So I had to go down um, a pretty decent way to find anything that I would consider a true white dress. So that's kind of a disappointment. The other thing is it does seem like they have way, way less filters. So again, when you're looking for clothing, you really wanna have as detailed of filters as possible because women, okay? Um, well, there's petite, there's maternity, there's you know, plus size, there's a lot of different types of women out there. So what kind of women? Do I only get one type here? Um, the other thing here is brand. So again, this one does seem like it is brand oriented. We did see that a lot in ThreadUp as well. Sizes, sizes, hello. Yeah, this is no, no. Why? There's no sizes. That sucks. So this is disappointing. How am I supposed to find anything that I even care about if I don't know what size it's in? It's pretty um, frustrating for the end consumer to be able to find a dress that you really like and like this one. Oh, okay, so it does have, why does it do that? So there's a size here. Why is it not over here as a filter? Poshmark, fix yourself, that's a problem. All right, so the other thing though, I will give them a big perk is they, they also do have these um, these heart systems, again, they both have that. It seems nice. Okay, Victoria Beckham, I know that is a brand. She was a Spice Girl. All of you that are into fashion, go ahead and make fun of me in the comments. It's totally fine. Let's go back to the filters because there's not many. So we do have colors. Um, okay, so they do, wait, why is it? Mm. It's not clickable. Why is it not clickable? To me, I would think, oh, all colors. If I click that, it'll be things that are multicolor. Nope. Okay, so if I change it, let's let's look at pink. Okay, so it just un unselects. Oh, so it's your way of unselecting. That's a little weird um, to have that uh, as your select all, deselect all. Not not a fan. Uh, different prices. Okay, this is nice that they have the prices and the custom prices that you can uh, list out. Different types, closet or boutique. What's the difference? Uh, I am seeing more white dresses, but again, top result, it's not white. Nope, that is a blue plaid dress. So um, I searched for white dresses and I did a filter. Um, and okay, and then av availability. Why would you wanna look at only sold items? Because I know some people that actually sell on, on some of these. Seeing things that were sold and what price will help you price your own materials. So maybe that's why, but that seems like a different user, a different user persona. It seems like they're kind of throwing all their user personas into one interface, which isn't ideal. Okay, let's go look at the metadata. It tells me how long ago this was put up. That's kind of nice. I, I actually do like that. And it tells me point blank who sold it. So let me be honest, so far I have not been a big fan of Poshmark's metadata. However, that trusted seller kind of thing 
seems like it might override all of the great metadata that um, ThreadUp has. Cute and comfortable aqua navy blue plaid dress. Okay, cool. Thank you. Made in the USA. Fabric is 100% polyester. Again, these are not controlled fields. This would be really great Poshmark to control so people can find it. There, ThreadUp gets you because ThreadUp has that as a controlled field. We've got category. We do have color as very distinct metadata fields, which I do like that they point blank say that. How they're using this in their search algorithm, I'm not quite sure because if I type in white dress, um, maybe that's why this is showing up because it says white. And to be honest, they don't know if I want an only white dress or a white dress that has white on it. Uh, but this would indicate why this is showing up in my search results. Tells you a little bit about uh, pricing. It does tell you the price dropped 12%. So that's interesting thing here. Mm? I'm, c I'm confused. <laughs> it, it's, it's saying it was $0 and now it's $23. Something tells me this is a null value hiding behind a $0 uh, dollar amount. Not great because it's confusing. If the seller didn't know how much this dress was originally, which I suspect is why this says zero, um, Poshmark should have a better application as to how to handle that. Uh, it does tell you that the price has dropped, although it's like hidden underneath all these other things. I would assume this would wanna be front and center. Hey, 12% off, woo, great. It's really hidden in here, which kind of sucks. Um, okay, so this is nice. It also gives you all of the comments. Um, I know ThreadUp also had comments, but these ones tell you the date um, and how many other people like it. So that's pretty cool. And oh, and this is nice. Again, it's, it's really focusing on that seller. So I can look at the other things that she is selling and I can be like, wow, this is, this is great. It also looks like she's a posh ambassador, which Sounds like she has um, a good standing with Poshmark, which means she probably doesn't get a lot of complaints or a lot of returns for um, bad things. And then find similar listings. This is by size, color, and new with tags, which is kind of like, you know, the, the quality of it, I guess, right now. Uh, other dresses you might like because you're looking at this and common searches. So this one doesn't necessarily tell me uh, other brands like this one, but I also don't think from Pink Owl, is that a brand? Mm, okay, yes, Pink Pink Owl is a brand. Doesn't seem like there's a lot known about it because there isn't an, uh, an image and things like we saw for the original one we saw like this. Um, but you can see there are, other, uh, there are other things like Pink Owl. Now, one thing that ThreadUp does better than Poshmark with this was remember in ThreadUp, it actually said, oh, if you like this brand, here are some other brands that are similar. This one doesn't do that. It just says, hey, here's some other things that are like that. It's up to you to figure out what other stuff is similar to Pink Owl. Here again is another null value hiding in plain sight. It was $0, woohoo, and now it's nine. Okay, and then it has some oh, prom dress. Ooh, that's like a prom, eh. That's not a prom dress. What are they saying? That's wrong. Okay, that's like a mother of the bride dress. Okay, so mm, I, so far I feel like this isn't giving me what I anticipated um, from, from that search. Okay, so I think I have seen enough. Let's go over to the wrap up. All right, so that was an adventure. Uh, so far, what I would say is um, the perks that I saw that I really liked on Poshmark where they really focused on the seller because in consignment, knowing who you're buying from and how well they price their material, if they're buying things that are a little more used than uh, you would want, like things with holes in it and that sort of thing. Um, all of that is really important when you're doing consignment. So the focus in Poshmark on the uh, seller is really fantastic. That unfortunately, I think is kind of where it stops for me. Uh, there was a lot of um, mistaken values. There was very few filters. Um, there was not a lot of cohesion in, you know, how did I find a size? I couldn't even do that. Um, one thing that Poshmark did do well 
um, was not flood my search results with the same provider like ThreadUp did. But honestly, you know, with all the other problems that I saw on Poshmark, I really can't even give that to them. Um, so at least from this metadata challenge, I gotta give it to Thread Up. So with that, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you like these kinds of videos, give this video a thumbs up, give me a nice comment and make sure you subscribe. So with that, I wanna thank you very much and I'll catch you next time.